let's talk about video game films. Well, not all of them, as there's quite a few now. But here's the thing, of all those films, we're yet to actually have a good one. Sure, we've had some okay ones with perhaps Silent Hill or the first Resident Evil working fairly well, and I have a soft spot for the first Mortal Kombat, but otherwise they're almost all at least bad, if not mostly terrible. Why is this? Why is nobody yet to make a good film based on a video game? Can it really be that difficult? Well, let's begin with what makes games different to films. Obviously, there is a fact that games are interactive and films are not, but it goes deeper than that. Films are about telling a story, and though as much as the best films are of course incredibly immersive, they still play out in a linear fashion of a very carefully constructed narrative. Games are different. The best games also have great stories, but their stories must work in a completely different way. Normally AAA games offer around 6 to 15 hours of gameplay, though of course that changes with larger sandbox and RPG games, but it's a good ballpark. There may be a feature film's worth of cinematics in a game, but they are secondary to the gameplay. Should you simply remake the cinematics of a game when making a movie, and add action scenes where the gameplay is? Actually, that might work for a game like The Last of Us, as it does have some fantastic cinematics. But I'd argue that this would be a bad idea. Cinematics are there to support gameplay, to put the player in a certain place at a certain time, usually to then kill as many bad guys as possible. Sticking to the story in the game immediately hinders the filmmaker. They are then remaking something as a film, but making the story that was designed to support gameplay and thus is a secondary part of the game, the primary function of the movie. Most game films adapt the game's already quite basic story and then pack the film with scenes reminiscent of the game. They don't care as much about the characters and their motivations as, in video games, character motivations are shaky. As said, they are there to place characters in a situation where they usually fight against as many enemies as possible. Games care less for what a character needs and wants. There isn't really drama in the way you'd find it in a film. The drama in a video game comes from the feeling of fighting adversity yourself, of completing objectives, of discovery. Games are often cited as not having their Citizen Kane moment, but then of course they haven't. Games and films are a completely different beast for so many reasons, and you can make a whole documentary on what kind of art the video game is. In many ways, it encompasses all arts, with cinema, literature, architecture, sculpture, and more contained within a video game. You could also say that films haven't had their Chrono Trigger or Shadow of the Colossus moment. Adapting a story designed for a video game into a film is folly. The beats just won't work. You need to find what the greater themes and concepts are within the game that you can craft a tale from for the silver screen. You need to take how it feels to play the game, and give that to the film's audience, worry less about everything else. This is why I'd argue actually that Metal Gear Solid wouldn't make the best video game film, and why it has yet to be done. The MGS series depends so heavily on its campaign's melodramatic hours-long stories that were you to make it into a movie, you'd have to condense the story so much that one would question exactly why you'd even bother in the first place. However, perhaps it could work if you free yourself from the restraints of the game's narrative and general constructs. Were you to say make a film about Nathan Drake as he is in the Uncharted games, you'd end up with a psychopathic Indiana Jones knockoff. Would it please fans if you did this? No, because it'd be a bad film. I hope the guys making the movie keep this in mind. After all, comic fans are perhaps the only ones that can match video game fans for their intense love of their art, yet even they will accept an adaptation of their most beloved properties if it is done well, regardless of deviation from the original material. Games are more different to films than comics are, so don't be afraid to go off book. But then you could just avoid this altogether. Why not go for games of interesting worlds, unique concepts and themes that are worth exploring? Ones perhaps without such a beloved story. So that to make a film of them makes sense. So that you would be building upon the source narrative, not condensing it. Look at a game like Hotline Miami. You play a man getting strange calls that send him to various locations, where he then brutally dispatches gangsters and later police and SWAT guys. That's pretty much it. It works because of the intensity of the gameplay, the trippy visuals and the pumping soundtrack. So why would Hotline Miami work as a film? Because the story is very basic. Anyone who plays it can see that to make a film of it, you would need to build a completely new story and massively fill out the character. But could still retain what makes the game special. The character would end up being a neo-80s hyper Travis Bickle, and in the hands of someone like Jason Eisner, whose hobo of a shotgun isn't far off the style and story of this anyway, you could make something that both respects and builds upon the source material. Maybe Hotline Miami is a less flashy game with obviously less box office potential, but then at least doing something like this would prove to audiences video game films can be done well. Another franchise you could probably do this with would be Far Cry. It has already been done by Overball, but you could do it better with something like Far Cry 3. There is story, but it's done well enough and isn't a big enough part of the overall game that you could rework it enough to make an exciting movie. Another problem when adapting a game though is adapting how it looks to play the game, instead of more the feeling of playing it. This is seen so often in fan films, but it happens in Hollywood too. Doom tried it with the first person sequence and it just feels weird. It comes out of nowhere and it feels like a shooting gallery. It's boring. You can't affect the outcome in any way during a sequence, and if you wanted this in a movie, just go play Doom Free or something. We come to films for story, and story weaved into action. We don't need to simply see what we can get at home when we play the game, give us something new. Make us feel the experience of playing the game, not just see a visual translation of it. 
It's another reason I think the Resident Evil films have become steadily worse. The first is relatively okay for the most part and does what I think a lot of video game adaptations should do. Take the concept, being locked in a high-tech mansion with zombies, and then craft a new story around it. I don't mind that the characters are different so much, but what they do get wrong is the vibe and the feeling of a Resident Evil game. Resident Evil's earlier and better incarnations were tense affairs, where death lurked around every pre-rendered corner. To make a character who can do this just really takes away from what makes Resident Evil special. Mia Jovovich tweeted this in regards to one of the later Resident Evil sequels. Just to let the Resident Evil fans know, because there's been a bunch of questions about the next film, Paul has kids that are professional players. They play the game for weeks and give Paul the footage. So, he's literally watching days of the most awesome Resident Evil players out there to get inspiration for the next installment of the franchise. The thing is, Resident Evil is not about being awesome at the game, at least for the most part. It's at times punishingly difficult with you struggling with injured characters that lack ammo as you try and avoid overpowered enemies. After playing through it a lot, you can speedrun it like any game, but they're meant to be scary. Had they adapted the vibe as well as the concept, that first film would have been so much more effective and in turn favoured by fans regardless of its lack of faithfulness to the story. Jovovich and Anderson clearly don't know what it is that makes the games work as an experience, and so we end up with this. This ties into my next point too, and that is getting the wrong guys to make these films. Most video game films are directed by guys who aren't really gamers, and so they try and please gamers by putting into the films what they think gamers might want to see. Like the aforementioned Doom FPS sequence or basing your film's content off watching professional players. If you can, hire someone who loves the source material, or at least someone who won't try and pander to gamers. Duncan Jones is doing the Warcraft film, and so far all word of that project is nothing but positive. Footage has been seen and the reaction has been naught but praise. Jones is also an avid gamer. His movie Source Code about a man reliving over and over his own death feels in itself like a video game, but also a fantastic film. The director of Silent Hill also loved that franchise and he made one of the best video game adaptations ever with his version of the game. They made some big leaps in narrative, making an almost all-female cast for instance, and feels like its own beast for the better. Kevin Tancherowen, who directed the Machinima official web series Mortal Kombat Legacy, got to do so thanks to his leaked proof of concept short Mortal Kombat Rebirth, which he made as a huge fan of the original games. A dark, gritty reimagining of the series bring it into the real world was surprisingly effective and was a huge success online. He knows the games. He doesn't need to pander to the fans as he is one. He inherently knows what they would like. The short has pretty fantastic choreography and does a great job of finding ways to make these outlandish characters make sense in a less fantastical setting. Sadly, upon making the web series, it seems Tantra Rowan was forced into making it fit more into the aesthetic and story of the games. So the cool real-world Baraka that looked like this became this Lord of the Rings knockoff orc thing and you get the drift. It's a real shame that the Mortal Kombat Rebirth short did not end up as the movie Tantra Rowan intended as with great casting and excellent production value, the short succeeds pretty brilliantly. It's brutal, stylish, and one of the few video game fan films at classes at least being half decent. I'm not saying too that we should only hire directors who enjoy the source material, but instead saying that Hollywood should have stated adapt more how it feels to play a game, as opposed to the direct narrative for gameplay. Directors who are also gamers get that, but screenwriters are probably the most important part of this. They should relish the freedom adapting a game potentially offers. Have the character of your film feel the way a gamer would feel playing their experience. You get this from playing the games and looking at it from your own experience, not everybody else's. You'll never please game friends by trying to please them, try instead to be one of them. Ignore all the Gamergate type BS, when I say be a gamer I mean just sit with a controller and immerse yourself in the experience, let that guide the adaptation. The latest video game film to appear is Hitman Agent 47, which after some delays finally released a trailer recently. I've never really understood why they would want to adapt Hitman once, let alone twice, as the games are so purely gameplay. The story of the games are forgettable to non-existent, and are there solely to place Agent 47 in various sandbox locales where the player has free reign to do whatever they need to to assassinate a target. The character is literally a bald white clone, who exists only to kill. So why make a film of him? He's not that interesting. When I play Hitman, the only potential adaptation I can think of is, what would it be like to be hunted by this guy? Let's see that film. Show us the victim side. In the end, Hollywood will obviously want to mine video games for films, and game companies will always see some prestige in having a film made of their games. I've shied away from talking about guys like Uwe Boll as most game companies won't let him near their stuff anymore. Ironically though, his adaptation of Postal arguably was quite successful in his adaptation. It, like the games, was as offensive and grotesque as possible, but only loosely adapted what little stories in the franchise. Fans of the game Postal seem to also like the film Postal. I like neither, but I guess it worked. 
We did miss out on what might have been one of the best Hollywood adaptations of a game franchise, with a Halo film Neil Blomkamp was set to direct. His idea of having the film focus on other characters and have the faceless Master Chief in the background could have been fantastic, but sadly the companies bottled it due to the rising budget. The script for the unmade Halo film exists online, and frankly, I'm glad it wasn't made. Blomkamp's vision was to make the audience feel like they were in a war, not in a video game. It was ground level and about the grunts. In the Hollywood script, Master Chief just isn't that interesting of a protagonist. In a game, he totally makes sense. Similar things can be said for the Bioshock film that Gore Rubinsky was looking to make. The producers wanted to dilute it down to PG-13 as the R version seemed too expensive. They just don't understand that Bioshock has to be hardcore. You can't adapt the story so much as it's just a guy wandering around corridors fighting what are basically zombies. So there would have to be a completely new story created. But the vibe and the atmosphere would have to remain. The feeling of the game. Game companies do seem to be taking a bit more care with who they let take on their games, with Ubisoft now having their own film division to help guide production of any Hollywood adaptations of their games. Hopefully they will ensure that the films are more self-contained and daring than previously seen, but I also hope that they don't take so much control that they strangle any potential creativity that may arise from that partnership. And talking about Ubisoft, they are doing Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell's movies. Neither really need adaptations, but Assassin's Creed especially has never screamed to me that it would make a good film franchise, as it just feels so gamey. And that's without the animus stuff and the absolutely bonkers story. You'd have to change so much, that would it even be Assassin's Creed anymore? Why not just make an original period action film? Sure, you lose out on the name value and some money, but... Oh, yeah, of course. Hollywood will do whatever makes the most money. Taking a game like Prince of Persia, a very popular franchise with legions of fans, and throwing in some famous actors and a veteran director seems like a great recipe. Will it be a good film? Who cares, as long as it makes money. Adapting a game should be easy, as they are such different art forms that you can be allowed a lot of freedom. People always say, you can never please fans, but it's not true if you make a good film. It trumps all expectations a fan might have. Adapt the feeling you get playing a game, not what it looks like. Take the atmosphere and the themes, but don't be holding yourself completely to the game's narrative. Pick artists interested in telling a good story, ones that inherently understand at least what it is to actually play a game. Staying up late, working on a boss, fighting through a level, discovering something new, feeling excited, nervous, terrified, tired, exuberated. That is what it is to play a great game. And these are emotions you can make a film audience feel too. That should be your aim. Games do what games do well and films do what films do well, but feelings and emotions are universal. Adapt those.